Almost everyone is familiar with the Salvation Army. We see volunteers in red vests ringing bells at many outdoor locations during the holidays, inviting shoppers to donate to this worthwhile cause. But there is so much more to know about the Salvation Army. Here to discuss this with us is Major Nick Garrison, Aryan Area Commander for Northwest Arkansas. I'm Nancy Noyes, and you're watching Bella Vista and Beyond. Welcome, Major Garrison. Hi there. Thank you for having me today. Oh, you're welcome. Well, so first let's talk about the history of the Salvation Army. Absolutely. So the Salvation Army began um, back in the 1800s uh, over in London, England. Oh. There was a Methodist minister uh, by the name of William Booth and his wife Catherine, and they had a passion to go out, uh, to preach to people, as many ministers do, of course. Uh, but their passion was to preach to people on the streets, to the drunkards, to the beggars, to the prostitutes. And quickly they realized this is a full-time ministry that just needed that focus. So quickly it began a work beyond just Methodist Church that William Booth felt called to focus completely on that and began the work of the Salvation Army in London, England in 1865. Well, it's been going a long time then. That's exactly right. Well, could you read this blast brass plaque for us? Sure, this comes from a, vain, a very famous speech of William Booth that says this, while women weep as they do now, I'll fight. While little children go hungry as they do now, I'll fight. While men go to prison, in and out, in and out, as they do now, I'll fight. While there, is, while there yet remains one dark soul without the light of God, I'll fight, I'll fight till the very end. Now let me tell you, that fight's still going on today. We still see people in our communities that the Salvation Army is there to help to fight against these problems in our world. Excellent. And I must say that I shot that particular shot at the Bentonville Salvation Army facility for the homeless. What a great reminder as soon as you walk through our doors there exactly. to see what we're about and why we do it. How did this organization come to be called the Salvation Army? Well, it was very interesting uh, back in the 1800s when all these people were out on the streets beginning this work. It first started being called a Christian movement. Um, and they were just trying to fill the movement of God and what was going on. Um, and they, they often would refer to William Booth as the general. And it kind of became this fun thing. And another person said, well, then if you're a general, I'm going to be a captain. And they kind of started this thing. And, and it started to look like they were gathering attentions by wearing uniforms and doing uh, all this to gather more attention on the street corners. And one day, um, they were in a meeting and somebody wrote, we are a volunteer army. And General Booth crossed out the word volunteer and said, no, we are a salvation army. This is the root of oh. everything we do is not just to help men um, and women and children with their physical needs, but also with their spiritual needs as well. Well, you have been involved with the Salvation Army for a long time. Could you tell us about your journey? Right. I actually was born into the ranks, as that you might say, ah. as, a, as a child of the Salvation Army. Um, my story goes way back, well before I was even born, when my dad, who was a single man at the time, uh, was an alcoholic uh, who was struggling through life to make ends meet, had a wonderful professional job at a hospital, but he dealt with alcoholism. And one day, uh, Nancy, he reached the point where he came to work drunk, made a dumb choice, punched his boss, <laughs> and as you can imagine, lost his job. And as the weeks went along, he started to realize he was in a, po a point of complete despair. He lost everything he had, didn't know what to do, and decided one day he was going to take his own life. Uh, and he was going to overdose on some pills, but he was smart enough to know if he did that, he would just regurgitate them. So he went to the Salvation Army for a meal, thinking, I'll eat my food, I'll go home, I'll take these pills and be done with it. But he said that day, they loved him so much that he couldn't do it. And so the Salvation Army literally is why I'm here today. Um, it saved my dad's life, who later met my mom, who was working at one of the thrift stores. 
Um, and later on, uh, they gave birth to me. And I've grown up around the Salvation Army, love the Salvation Army. My wife and I now have served for 17 years almost as Salvation Army officers and have been involved in the Army for over 20 years. Wow, that's quite impressive. One of the most enduring symbols of the Salvation Army is the red kettle for donation. How did that come about? There was an officer out in San Francisco back in 1891 uh, that saw there was huge needs across his community for receiving food around Christmas time, but they just didn't have the means to help. And so he remembered back in his military days, one time being overseas, that they had a big pot out sitting by the shoreline, and people would come by and put carrots and vegetables in it to create the soup for the homeless. And he thought, you know what, we could do something like that out here in San Francisco. And so he found this big pot, he put it out by the bay, and instead of taking food, they, instead they took donations. Ah. And that year they were able to take those donations and make sure no person had to go without food that Christmas season. And it just began to spread after that. By just a few years later, he had multiple kettles around town. And now we have over 150,000 kettles that go out across this nation every year. That's remarkable. <laughs> well, Dallas Cowboys star Ezekiel Elliott made news by running after a touchdown and jumping into a large kettle that was on the sidelines. What do you can tell you is what can you tell us about that? Well, I'll tell you the Cowboys have been a great supporter of the Salvation Army over the years. Jerry Jones, the owner and, and the whole organization and his family have been huge supporters of the Salvation Army. So Actually, over the years, you've probably never even really focused in on it, but watch a Cowboys game this next season. You'll see Salvage Army shields all around the field and also these big giant kettles. And I guess one year, Ezekiel Elliott thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with a great touchdown celebration. And so after his touchdown, jumped in the kettle. Um, he ended up getting fined, though. The NFL said, you can't do that. No props and celebrations. And so he paid his fine. And then he doubled that amount and he paid the Salvation Army a donation too. And so the uh, tradition has continued. I don't know if you've been noticed this year. There's been more celebrations on Thanksgiving Day with players jumping in the kettle and having a good time just celebrating the Salvation Army and bringing attention to the needs in the communities. Well, I think that that really did help to bring attention to the Salvation Army. Don't you? Absolutely. What a fun way yes. to get people to notice what we're doing. <laughs> and even Dak Prescott was over there with him. So it was really fun. So I recently read that during the Christmas season, the donation campaign raised $190,000, $196, $196. Where does that money go? So we're very much known for our Red Kettle campaign, our bell ringing outside the stores. And I've said for years that it's what's amazing about that if people trust us by putting the money in there, a lot of times they don't know where it goes. A lot of times they just trust the Salvation Army to do good to do good in our communities so it's great when i get to share with people what happens here in northwest arkansas those funds are our largest fundraiser throughout the entire year we have th uh, two homeless shelters and one in bentonville one in fayetteville we have an alcohol and drug rehabilitation center in fayetteville we have social services across four county areas that serve things like utility pay uh, payments rent assistance food assistance um, and so all those things that are raised in that kettle really do go right back into this community, right back into the Northwest Arkansas area to serve those in need. Excellent. Well, that's very impressive. So in addition to the Christmas giving, there are at least 15 other areas that the, the Salvation Army serves. Could you tell us about some of those? Right. With those shelters that I mentioned earlier, you know, in those shelters we serve men, women, and families uh, that come in with children. And so those shelters go year round uh, to serve the population that are in need. And, and we, you know, we see homeless people out and about, but it's sometimes it's even our next door neighbors that might just be on rough times. I've told people frequently, we're only one tragedy away ourselves from needing yeah. help from an organization like the Salvation Army. So we serve through our shelters, through our social service programs. You know, maybe somebody just needs one food box to help them get through. Kind of preventative social services, if you would, to make sure they don't end up homeless. If we can help pay a utility bill or a rent bill. Right. And so those services reach far and wide. And then one of the unique things we do here in Northwest Arkansas is that rehabilitation program. Uh, it serves over uh, 20 men can go through the program at a time. And we see on the average around 20 graduates every year. It's a six month program where they come and stay with us, live with us for six months. Uh, they work through our thrift stores, which actually all the funds raised to our thrift stores go right back into that program, right back into the rehabilitation of lives. So it's amazing to see the many things that take place here through the Salvation Army. Well, I think that that's such a great program because it helps the people that were former addicts mm. 
have a structure to their life and give their lives meaning. Absolutely. They have a job and they have a regular pattern of activities that they have to go through. I think that's wonderful. Absolutely. There's a whole structure to it with classes and, and work that they do with us uh, to help get them out of that. I mean, how are they ever going to have a chance in life when the addiction is beating them down so hard? Exactly. Right? How are they ever going to have a chance? We have one of our teachers that tell the guys every week when he teaches them. He says, you need to develop an attitude of total and complete defiance towards alcohol and drugs. Because with them, you don't have a chance. But without them, you got just much of a chance as anybody else. And so what a wonderful message we get to spread to these exactly, guys. Exactly. That is wonderful. Well, you know, in the Bible, 1 Peter chapter 4 through 8 says, Above all love, mm. what mm. does the Salvation Army do to illustrate this point? Well, I would sure hope that that's at the root of everything we do, is that through all of our, our social services, through all of our outreach to the community, it's all spawned on by the love of God. What practical ways can we have but to show love in very real ways? William Booth, early on in the Salvation Army, started realizing when he was working with the people on the streets, when he was working with homeless, and when he was working with drunkards, he said, listen, how am I going to feed a man's soul if his belly is still hungry? Oh, right. And so quickly began the work of the Salvation Army with social services of feeding people, take care of their physical needs, but still at the heart of what we do is the love of Christ. And we hope that in those practical ways, we're showing that love today. Oh, excellent. Well, I understand that the Salvation Army is committed to racial and ethnic mm -hmm. diversity. How does the Salvation Army demonstrate this? Well, at the end of the day, we want to serve people no matter where they come from, no matter who they are, no matter what background they have or even color of their skin. We care about people. And so we make sure that in all of our programs, where there is no discrimination whatsoever in how we serve people every day. Excellent. Well, I realize that the Salvation Army has a very big presence here in Northwest Arkansas. Mm. In, 19, in 1894, a team visited Hot Springs, Arkansas. Why did they go there? <laughs> well, there was the work that needed to be done. You know, as William Booth said earlier, as we talked about in that Owl Fight speech, while there are people that need our help, we'll fight for that. And so in those uh, early days of the Salvation Army here in America, quickly people spread across the country, spreading the good news. Um, just to make sure that people had the help that they need. Well, 1894, that, that was goes back a few quite years, right? a while ago. <laughs> yes. So I was impressed that the Salvation Army has been in existence since mm. then and maybe even before. Absolutely. So, um, so I know that the Salvation Army relies heavily on volunteers. What do they do within the Salvation Army framework? So we can always use help from volunteers. We have people that volunteer with us all the time. Uh, during the Christmas season, of course, is the easiest way to put people uh, to great use, ringing those bells, raising those funds. Uh, that program is driven by volunteers. And so we could always use help at Christmas time, uh, going out and volunteering, ringing a bell, or even adopting an angel off of our angel trees to help kids. But even throughout the year, we need help with volunteers. Uh, we have people that come into our soup kitchens and our shelters that just help serve a meal. goes a long oh. ways to be a friendly smile to somebody as they serve their meal. We have volunteers that will come in and help stock our food pantries and sort through the, those donations. We have people that come into our thrift stores and help hang clothes. Oh. Um, just practical ways of simple things you can do to give back uh, to the community by, by the time you have. Listen, not all of us have huge resources of money, but we do have time. And so what a practical way to give back to others. Exactly. And that's something that I had no idea of either. Mm -hmm. So that's a really worthwhile thing to volunteer for. So you recently spoke at the Highlands United Methodist right. Church Women's Group. Why did you do that? Well, I think they just needed somebody handsome in the room for the day. That's <laughs> what I think it was. No, uh, they wouldn't have called me if that was the case. No, it's what an opportunity, you know, for, for a women's group that loves to give back to their community. Yes. That have given back in many ways throughout the years for, this, for them to have a, a guest speaker to come in. And I was honored to go to them and just share a little bit more about some of the things we're talking about today. Yes. You know, a little bit deeper details of what the Salvation Army really is, what we really do in the community. Uh, I think it's important to get that message out. And so it was a wonderful group. Uh, to talk to, wonderful uh, reception that was there, and they fed me nicely, too, I might add. So it was a great morning we had out there. Oh, so, you know, um, members of our congregation made tie blankets. Mm -hmm. We made 63 tie blankets that we donated to the Bentonville Homeless right. Shelter, and that was really quite mm -hmm. a fun activity. As you can see, that they were mm -hmm. making the blankets here, and they were fleece blankets, and they were tied at the corners. And so it was really a lot of 
fun and a very good exercise, as you can see. Right. Then, in addition to that, we took the blankets to the Bentonville shelter and we donated them there. Mm. And that was a, quite an eye-opening experience for me. Um, I really appreciated that experience. Right. So when you first go in, you see several plaques, and this is one of them. And could you read that for us? I really like this one. Sure. This was uh, when the building was being built back in 1997. This is a Salvation Army Emergency Shelter. It's dedicated to the glory of God and the service of people. And it was an honor to Willard and Pat Walker on September 15, 1997. It's amazing to see you know, just community coming together to, to support a new building like that back in 1997. And as you mentioned, those blankets, goodness gracious, how much uh, use we got out of those blankets. Oh. Um, as I mentioned, we, we house people year round, but during the cold weather months, when the temperatures get below freezing, um, we have even more people come to us that come and stay with us. And so those blankets were put to great use, uh, made sure that, that every person had something warm. And even maybe somebody who didn't want to come stay with us is still wanted to stay in their tent, unfortunately. We were able to get blankets out to them oh. to make sure that they uh, had something warm too, even if they chose not to come inside for the night. Well, very good. I'm glad that they were useful. Absolutely. <laughs> so, well, homeless seems to be a big issue nationwide. Mm -hmm. So what is the homeless situation here in Northwest Arkansas? Well, you know, even in the scriptures, it was an issue, right? Even in the Bible, Jesus said, you're always gonna have the poor and the homeless among you. Um, and so we try to do everything we can to help those that are in, in the greatest needs in our communities. Um, and I do think we've seen an uptick of homelessness across Northwest Arkansas, um, mainly because we're growing, right? As the population is growing in this area, unfortunately, that also means that things like homelessness will also gradually grow too. I see. And so we're happy to help out in any way we can, uh, but it takes a community. It takes community support to do that. Uh, we have to make sure we have the right amount of staff and the volunteers in our shelters to keep going, but we're glad to say we're doing every bit that we can at this moment. Excellent. Well, often I see people outside of the parking lot in Jane or Pineville and they're begging for money. Mm. I never know what to do. Should I stop and give them money? I mean, how do you know that it's not going to go for addictions? Right. And, you know, and I know there's a lot of food pantries around the areas. What should a person do when they see someone begging for money on the street? I think that's such a hard thing we have to fight within ourselves, right? I mean, I even face it within myself as I pass somebody in that moment. I think the first thing I would say is know that there are people just like you and me, that they're going through struggles in life, um, but also know that there's community organizations like the Salvation Army and, and like you said, many others with food banks and churches that help this population. Uh, I would encourage you maybe donate more to a charity um, and then guide those people to those charities. I that see. way you know it's going to the right use. But if you still want to do something practical, I, I think some of the things we've seen people do throughout communities, which is just a great thing, is maybe make little Ziploc bags that have a, a bag of chips in it, um, maybe a banana or a piece of fruit, um, to make sure that they're not still going hungry. If they truly are in need of food, you can give them a snack to help with that. Or if you strike up a conversation, go grab them a burger from McDonald's and bring it back to them. But, but I, ultimately, I would say point them in the right direction. Uh, to where they can receive help. And if you're unsure of that, uh, we've got a great resource in this area too, 211. As long as you call 211 on any phone, you can talk about what somebody needs and they'll point you to organizations that can help with that also. Oh, that's good to know. Maybe you could put a slip in the Absolutely, right. of if you, what to do. If you've like already that. done your research, you know, for mm -hmm. instance, if you know the Salvation Army has shelters and you want to put that address there and put that down in your bag, that's a great way to give them practical resources. Okay, good. I'll do that. I think that's really good. So, why are veterans especially vulnerable to homelessness? I think we see so many people that are, that are vulnerable. Um, I think we see, especially right now, we're seeing addiction cause a lot, a lot of extra homelessness. I think we see mental illness that, that leads to a lot of extra um, uh, homelessness problems. But veterans in particular, I think, coming back from service, trying to get back into the civilian life, a lot of times have a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder that wrapped up with that, that lead them to hard times in life. So we reach out to them as well, of course. Oh, that's really great. So could you tell us something about the leadership of the Salvation Army? Well, we are first and foremost a church. And so all of the Salvation Army officers, you will see in these uniforms like mine with red on our shoulders, are fully ordained pastors through the Salvation Army. Oh. Um, and so we go through a two-year seminary program with a lot of practical ministry helps that also teach us through our social services. And so uh, what's great, though, is we really want to give back. We really want to see people helped. 
And so uh, all the leadership across the Salvation Army, all the way up to the general in, in London, England, are all on a small pay scale because what our hope is is that it's not about us, but it's about those we serve. Excellent. Well, do you have any particular perks or benefits that go along with your leadership? Like I know that you are area commander for mm -hmm. the Northwest Arkansas area. We are, so, we are taken care of by the Salvation Army. I mean, okay. if you will do your research with the other na uh, national nonprofits, we are actually one of the lowest paid uh, for executive leaders, but our needs are met. And that's what we care about, right? That's great. Is that, that we have a house to live in and a car to drive. But ultimately, we want to take care of others more than we even care about ourselves most days. You oh, know? that is so generous of you. Right. and really It's a joy to do, for sure. A wonderful opportunity, I think, for everyone that you serve and for yourself even. You it, know. It's, it's well worth it, let me tell you. I learned that the Salvation Army members can only marry other Salvation Army members. Could you talk about that? So that would be with our officers. So, officers. so that's not with our employees or anything. That's really with, just with our officers. And part of that is... Again, being an ordained pastor uh, for the Salvation Army, they ordain both the man and, and the woman, the oh. husband and the wife. And, and a lot of the reason that that is we move on an average of about every three to four years. <laughs> and so you can imagine if you had one spouse trying to settle down in a community while the other one's getting called to move somewhere else, makes it very difficult. But even recent years, the Salvation Army is starting to kind of explore to see, can we allow some of that a little bit more? Um, to make sure we're, we're fighting the needs that are out there. But it's a joy to serve alongside of my spouse for sure. Well, that's great. I, I think that that's a very practical decision. Mm, I really right. do. So, you know, um, what are some of the chronic needs of the Salvation Army at this time? Mm. I would say at this time of year, we're, we're seeing, you know, an uptick in people needing help with utility assistance is really big, you know. And so uh, I would say just make sure you're, you're putting the Salvation Army on your yearly donation list to help with that. Yeah. Um, we're also seeing needs for food. And so we can always take canned foods at our, at our places and help. But really, it's what we talked about earlier with volunteers. I think that having those extra hands uh, make the, the work a lot easier. So having extra hands maybe to help come and volunteer a day at our thrift stores, coming to volunteer a day at our soup kitchen can go a long ways. Excellent. Where are the thrift shops located? So we have three thrift stores across the Northwest Arkansas area, one in Fayetteville, one in Springdale, and one in Rogers. Um, we have two homeless shelters, uh, one of those in Fayetteville, one of those in Bentonville. Oh, good, good. Well, what can we do to help? Just volunteer and provide money for food and different kinds of things like that. If we wanted to give a financial donation, can we do that online? Absolutely. You can go to give.salvationarmy.org, oh, okay. um, or you could just visit our own website at nwasalvationarmy.org, and it'll take you right to those links to be able to give online, and those donations will stay local in this area. Excellent. And I think you made a very good point that the Red Kettle campaign in December, in January, maybe mm -hmm. November. November, December, yes ma'am. And that's a really good resource, but there's more chronic need throughout the right. rest of the years where donations would be gratefully accepted, Absolutely. I'm sure. Absolutely. We, we do receive donations year round. Um, you know, we don't turn that away uh, because there's always a need year round. And so we're grateful right. for what the community can do just for us to give right back to that same community. Well, I have learned so much about the Salvation Army through doing research and through talking with you. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. It was Is, a joy to be here today. Oh, thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Sure. If you'd like to learn more about the Salvation Army, as I mentioned, you could go to our website, uh, nwasalvationarmy.org, and there you can find so much more information and links to ways to give, uh, links of how to volunteer and how to be helpful for, for what we do. Uh, it's our joy to be able to reach back out to this community. We want to be community players. That's why we're here, because we care. Well, thank you so much for being here, Major Nick Garrison. We really appreciate it. And I think the viewers will learn so much from your explanations and your insights. Thank, thank you, you again. It's a pleasure. <clears throat> Thank you.